Hi, fellow investors. Joe here. Well, that was the worst one day for Tesla stock in as long as I can remember, as long as I've been following this, the shares. And I know many of you lost money today, and I did too. And that really sucks. Um, but what's done is done, and we need to make a plan going forward about what to do tomorrow and the next few days and the next few weeks. So let's um, go over the chart Look at how low it could go. Look at um, if we should sell shares. I actually sold some this morning um, and then again near the close for a 12% loss on the day, right? Um, and then I want to show you two indexes, the semiconductors, which are just now breaking down and are going to give us some good short opportunities. And I want to show you the energy index, which continues to be the only shining star in the sky. And then lastly, if you want to hang around at the very end of the video, I will give you a 30-second synopsis of why Tesla crashed so badly. Um, I'll give you a hint. It wasn't due to the report. It was due to the conference call. Before I do any of that, however, let me just remind you that this is not investment advice. This is just for education and for entertainment, and I am not a financial advisor, though I have been investing since 1996. All right, so here we see the one-year Tesla chart, and this is the ugliest candle of the year by far. 10% down day, and it closed. Low was 829, close was 829.10. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, as I've said, when the stock closes at near the top of its range, it often is up the next day, and when the stock closes near the bottom of its range, it is often down the next day. So... I'm going to venture a guess and say that it's um, going to be up a little bit tomorrow. And then it, the chances are it's going to hit this 200-day exponential moving average, and then it's going to sell off again. What was support becomes resistance. So um, there were buyers sitting at the 200-day exponential moving average. That's kind of the last line in the sand where money managers buy. And they sold. And now um, the bag holders who bought at the 200 day, when it comes back, they're going to say, woo, I shrew. <laughs> what do they say? Anyway, I dodged a bullet and they're going to sell. And the same thing, if we are fortunate enough to get back up to 900, it's going to be hit with swift and strong resistance because all of these trap buyers up here now, they are ticked off and... You know, there are some bottom fishers that bought here at 900. I actually bought here, and then I sold, like, right here. Um, but these guys that got trapped, they're going to want to get out. So it is going to be really tough sledding. So I sold, all in all, about a third of my shares today. And if it undercuts today's low, I'm going to sell another third. And then I'll hold on uh, one more third for the next day. And then I'm out. And I've been... Um, I've been in for a few years, so I'm taking a good profit on these shares. But if you are holding a loss, and it's a small loss, I really encourage you to cut your losses at 10% and save your powder. So how low is it going to go? Um, well, the most obvious, when I mean, you have some support lines, you got 775 right here. And then after that, probably where you are looking at 550 which is the bottom of this cup. If we look at the five-year chart, and actually, I mean, as painful as this has been, this does not look all that broken yet. Really, for the chart to break, it's got to drop all the way down to 550 and break this last support line. And then, my friends, if that happens, um, you know, <laughs> I, let's not talk about that. I don't think that's going to happen. Let's just say that's not going to happen. But personally, I don't want to take another $300 um, dollar drop. I'm going to get out with the majority of my profits intact. So that's, like I said, 775 Elon Musk and in the darkness buying them. Huh. I'll have to read that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> lost my train of thought. So 775, next support line. If that fails, 550. Or when the market in general does a big turnaround and the Fed couldn't do it yesterday so now we just need to let it unwind probably for gosh I don't know a few more weeks that's what I'm expecting 
So if you have a small loss, it opens down tomorrow. Personally, I would sell. If you are sitting up here at 900 or 875, if it comes up and then it starts to fade again, I would sell. Um, if And that's uh, my thoughts right now. Once it gets above 900, then we can talk about what to do next. But right now we have bigger fish to fry. Now, let me show you something. Oh, I just wanted to just say again, um, buying a stock is not a marriage. You can um, get divorced from the stock at any minute. And if the next day you realize you screwed up, you can buy it back. Just swallow your pride and buy it back. And that's what I'll do. I'm, I'm going to keep selling beneath the 200 day. And then when it gets above the 200 day again, I'm going to buy back in. And if I buy back in at a higher price, oh well, so what? Now, you could be making money shorting right now. Um, what is that? No, never mind. Um, so, and a lot of the industries have broken down really hard already. And it's getting dangerous to short them because they already have crashed so much. But the semiconductors were holding up really well. This is the semiconductor index, the SOX, S-O-X. And it was holding up really well, tried to bounce off its 200-day exponential moving average, and then it just blew through it hard. That kind of reminds me of Tesla, doesn't it? So if there are like 30 or 40 of these semiconductor stocks, and some of them are at a perfect um, sell point, sell short point right now. So you might consider doing that. But shorting is really, really tricky. Small positions and put a, put a cover stop on it of 10% or less. I'm shorting four of these babies right now. I wish I had a time to make another video on those, but I don't. If you do want to go long, the place to be is the energy companies, oil, gas, related suppliers. This is the XLE index. We can't buy this right now because it's overextended, but this shows the strength of the semiconductor uh, of the energy companies right now. Find yourself a list of the oil and energy stocks. Guess what? I put out two videos on oil and energy stocks, and most of those stocks are doing great. So I will link those in the description, and you might check out those two videos if you haven't already. Now, let's talk about there are some a bunch of great videos on why the stock Tesla um, crashed today. And Dave Lee's with um, Gary Black was fantastic. I'll link that in the description too. But let me give you the 30 second rundown. Okay, so number one, we have a general market sell off of biblical proportions, right? And everyone is panic selling. They're selling their losers, they're selling their winners, they're locking in profits. A lot of people probably don't want to sell Tesla but they're getting margin calls and have to tell, sell Tesla, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a general um, mass market sell-off. Number two, uh, the chip shortage. Elon said hopefully it'll be um, over with by the end of the year. That's 12 months from now. And you know what he said about 10 times during the conference call? He said chip shortage, chip shortage, chip shortage, chip shortage. And um, yeah, that's scary to investors, right? We, that is not what we want to hear at all. And then third, you know, Elon promised us um, that he was going to give us a product roadmap. And what he gave us was some great, um, you know, ideas for the long-term future. But the roadmap was super fuzzy. When is Berlin opening? I don't know. When is Texas opening? Sometime soon. When is the Model 2 being built? Uh, we might not even make that now. Um, when is the robot coming out? Who knows? When is FSD coming out? Elon will be, quote, shocked if it doesn't come out by the end of the year, which is amazing. But he said that last year, and I think he said that the year before. So I hope he's right, and but I, I can't trust him on that. So, yeah, the roadmap, uh, the long-term roadmap 10 years from now is fantastic. But what's happening in 2022 is really fuzzy. And honestly, I, I think Elon is one of the greatest people on the planet and probably the best uh, entrepreneur slash inventor, but he is not good at conference calls and he really shouldn't be on the conference calls anymore. All right, well, I managed to get that done in under 10 minutes. I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm really sorry about the price action today, um, but we did talk yesterday that we th thought this would happen and it did. So um, this is a good reminder to all of us Keep your losses at 10%. And if you're sitting on a 50% loss right now, then you need to tell yourself, never again.
be precise with your entry points and if it falls lower than 10% then you cut bait and you can always buy back in. Well let me know um, how you feel about the chart or the Q4 earnings or anything else you want to talk about in the comments and I will talk to you guys hopefully tomorrow. Take care everybody.